And we are back. This is Nick at the FSF Podcast with another episode of 5 at 5. The last couple times I've been on here, I talked about board games to get us started into board gaming and board games to get you going to the next level. Now to take things even a step further. These are relatively complex compared to the previous games I've mentioned, but are also among my favorites. Number five, Zia. Zia comes in with a rank of 7.9 and a complexity rating of 3.19. This is a three to five player game, usually lasts one to three hours. Recommended ages is 12 and up. Zia, Legends of Adrift System, is a three to five player sandbox style competitive space adventure. Each player starts as a lowly but hopeful captain of a small starship. Players fly their ships about the system, completing a variety of missions, exploring new sectors, and battling other ships, navigating hazardous environments. Players choose to mine, salvage, or trade valuable cargo. Captains vie with each other for titles, riches, and most importantly, fame. The most adaptive, risk-taking, and creative players will excel. One captain will rise above the others, surpassing mortality by becoming a legend. You get to customize your ships. Each player begins the game by choosing and customizing a tier one starship. Invest all your money in engines and be a rapid yet fragile explorer. Put all your credits into an Uber missile and watch the other players flee in terror. Get a small engine, save some space and credits to invest in buying and selling cargo or create a well-rounded ship ready for anything. In Zia, the choice is always yours. The goal of Zia is to become the most famous captain, completing missions, besting ships in combat, purchasing higher tier ships, selling cargo cubes, and claiming tiles are all ways that players can earn fame points. The best pilots will adapt to their surroundings, making snap judgments and changing plans on the fly. If you can think on your feet, you will do well in Zia. This is a sandbox game, and the real fun of Zia is that each game will be different. There is no set direction of play. Players may choose to be peaceful traders, fierce pirates, workers, miners, opportunists, etc. The game board is randomly laid out and explored each time you play. Players might choose not to explore at all, or they might create a tiny area for swift and deadly combat or explore all 19 of the sectors and have a large playscape to exploit. It's up to you. And when it gets really fun, is sometimes the spaces move. The expansion for this game is a high priority. The, it expands the universe and adding more unique ships and fantastic mechanics. Number four, A Feast for Odin. This game comes in at a ranking of 8.2 and has a complexity rating of 3.85. A Feast for Odin is best played between 1 to 4 players. It can last 30 minutes to 2 hours. Recommended ages is 12 and up. Here you puzzle together the life of a Viking village as you hunt, farm, craft, and explore. A Feast for Odin is a saga in the form of a board game. In this game, you will raid and explore new territories. You will also experience the day-to-day -day activities of Vikings, collecting goods to achieve a financially secure position in society. In the end, the player whose possessions bear the greatest value will be declared the winner. A Feast for Odin is a points-driven game with a plethora, and I mean a plethora, of pathways to victory. With a range of risk balanced against reward, a significant portion of this is your central hall which has a whopping negative 86 points of squares and a major part of your game is attempting to cover these up with various tiles. Don't worry, we end up scoring somewhere around 60s to 70s usually. Likewise, long halls and island colonies can also offer large rewards, but they will have their penalties of their own. Each year follows a familiar pattern of preparation worker placement, and then meeting the requirements of your feast. The main phase of each year is a worker placement affair. You start with a selection of Vikings and a large action board with 61 different options to choose from. Each of these will be arranged from left to right 
in one of four columns. Each column requires an additional Viking to activate, but they are proportionally more powerful. At the end of each round, you will need to fill a feast table with food. You will also have a chance to lay the valuable green and blue tiles into your main hall. The configuration of these tiles must follow certain requirements, but your main goal is to both cover up a line of coin icons to increase your income, while otherwise encircling certain printed icons to generate those. This has a lot of tetris -y elements to it, so if you like Tetris and putting things together and building an engine, this is the game for you. You will build your engine over time, following an alternate, alternating pattern of outward expansion and hunting against development and cultivation. It all comes down to how much you're willing to take on at any one time and what risk you're willing to set yourself up with for their rewards. Now, it may sound like that there are a lot of pieces and parts to this. That is true. But once you get familiar with it, it's actually very simple in how things are organized and laid out. Number three, Nemesis. Nemesis is rated at an 8.3 with a complexity rating of 3.41. Recommended players is one to five. Playtime is anywhere from 90 to 180 minutes. Recommended ages is 12 and up. You survive an alien infested spaceship, but beware of other players and their agendas. Playing Nemesis will take you into the heart of a sci-fi survival horror in all its terror. I like to tell people it's the movie Alien as a board game. A soldier fires blindly down a corridor trying to stop the alien advance. A scientist races to find a solution in his makeshift lab. A traitor steals the last escape pod in the very last moment. The intruders or aliens you meet on the ship are not only reacting to the noise you make, but also evolve as the time goes by. The longer the game takes, the stronger they become. During the game, you control one of the crew members with a unique set of skills, personal deck of cards, and individual starting equipment. These heroes cover all of your basic sci-fi horror needs. For example, the scientist is great with computers and research, but will have a hard time in combat. The soldier, on the other hand, you can figure that out. Nemesis is a semi-cooperative game in which you and your crewmates must survive on a ship infested with hostile organisms. To win the game, you have to complete one of the two objectives dealt to you at the start of the game and get back to Earth in one piece. You will find many obstacles on your way. Swarms of intruders, the poor physical condition of the ship, such as rooms catch on fire, rooms break down, and if there's too much fire, or if there's too much mechanical distress, the ship explodes. Agendas held by your fellow players, and sometimes just cruel fate. This is the game, just when you say, you got this, everything is fine, that's exactly when everything goes wrong. The gameplay of Nemesis is designed to be full of climactic moments, which hopefully you will find rewarding even when your best plans are ruined and your character meets a terrible fate. Nemesis has also released a second standalone game called Nemesis Lockdown with some new mechanics and new aliens. The minis to this game are amazing and really fun to paint. There are several expansions that include various aliens or intruders that you can go up against. Number two, Twilight Imperium. Twilight Imperium has a rating of 8.6 with a complexity rating of 4.27. This is best played with three to six players. This game will take all day. Average playtime is 240 minutes to 480 minutes. This is the game that you want to, this is what we are doing. Recommended ages is 14 and up. Twilight Imperium, the fourth edition, is a game of galactic conquest in which three to six players take on the role of one of 17 factions vying for galactic domination through military might, political maneuvering, and economic bargaining. Every faction offers a completely different play experience, from the wormhole hopping ghost of Cirrus to the amities of Hakan, masters of trade and economics. These 17 races are offered many paths to victory, but only one may sit upon the throne of Medical Rex as the new masters of the galaxy. 
No two games of Twilight Imperium are ever identical. At the start of each galactic age, the bo game board is uniquely and strategically constructed using 51 galaxy tiles that feature everything from lush new planets and supernovas to asteroid fields and gravity rifts. Players are dealt a hand of these tiles and take turns creating the galaxy around Mechatol Rex. The capital planet, seated in the center of the board, an ion storm may block your race from progressing through the galaxy while fortuitously placed gravity rift may protect you from your closest foes. The galaxy is yours to both craft and dominate. A round of Twilight Imperium begins with players selecting one of eight strategy cards that both determine player order and give their owner a unique strategic action for that round. These may do anything from providing additional command tokens to allowing a player to control trade throughout the galaxy. After these roles are selected, players take turns moving their fleets from system to system claiming new planets for their empire, and engaging in warfare and trade with other factions. At the end of a turn, players gather in a grand council to pass new laws and agendas, shaking up the game in very unpredictable ways. Number 1. Gaia Project Gaia Project has a rating of 8.4, with a complexity rating of 4.38. This has a recommended of players of 1 to 4. Playtime is 60 to 150 minutes. Recommended ages 12 and up. Gaia Project, you expand, research, upgrade, and settle the galaxy with one of 14 alien species. 14 different factions live on 7 different kinds of planets, and each faction is bound to their own home planets. So to develop and grow, they must terraform neighboring planets into their home environments in competition with the other groups. In addition, Gaia planets can be used by all factions for colonization. The trans-dimensional planets can be changed into Gaia planets. All factions can improve their skills in six different areas of development. Terraforming, navigation, artificial intelligence, Gaia farming, economy, research, which all lead to advanced technology and special bonuses. To do all of that, each group has a special set of skills and abilities. I have recently played this one. It took us a little while to learn the game. So I highly recommend with all of these games to watch some how to play videos or take some time and read the rule book, of course. I think the best way to learn how to play these games is to play with someone who has already played them and has an idea of what they're talking about. These are my top five picks for this week's Five at Five of more complex board games. We look forward to seeing you next time. Next time, I'm going to talk about party games that you would enjoy at a party. That's why they're called party games. And that will conclude us for this episode of Five at Five.